Hello, everybody. I'm John Schneider. I'm your host for this episode of Jersey Bay Shark Country. And this is an episode I've been wanting to do for a long time. You know, a lot of these shows uh, are uh, shows that I'm interested in. And this is not only a show that I'm interested in, but I think a show that can help me and probably help you as well. We're going to talk about computers, uh, how to repair them, how to find a place to repair them, how to upgrade them, how to make them better, how to work them in our favor, etc. And with me is uh, an extraordinary authority on computers, someone who owns Two River Computer in Fairhaven, New Jersey, uh, my new good friend, Tom Bull. Hi, Tom. How are you, John? You know what? I, I, I'm so glad you're here. I have so many questions. <laughs> I don't well, let's start out slow. <laughs> okay. You know, my grandfather used to buy a Cadillac every year. And, uh, you know, the technology kind of moved along, but he always bought a new Cadillac. And he'd go to the dealer and they'd say, well, this year you got this feature and this year you got this feature. And computers came along and sometimes people would, you know, buy the computer of the of the year or the computer of every two years because it had all the bells and whistles and now I'm not sure where the industry is there are computers you can buy by mail order there are computers you buy online there are computers that you can build and there are computers that are ready made uh, there are notebooks and laptops, and there are computers in that little iPhone, in a, in a yeah, way, I guess. Yeah. Uh, what is the state of the state? <laughs> well, they kind of, I like to say that things fall into buckets. Um, there's a different bucket for, for each type of user. There's a business bucket, um, and those people are, are dealing with computers that make them money. This is their livelihood often, and... So they need to, in my opinion, they need to spend some real money uh, on those types of computers and not buy the computer of the month or buy it from the Home Shopping Network or uh, not to disparage the Home Shopping Network. <laughs> but the, the point is that um, they need to be um, thoughtful about the purchase and they need to know that it's going to run for 40 hours a week or maybe more. And so they need to be sure to buy uh, for the marathon as opposed to the sprint. Uh, and the home user uses it in some ways uh, or some occasions lesser amount of time per week some people go home and they just can't get off facebook for you know and they're they're using it more at home than they are at work so uh, those computers however don't seem to need as much um, oomph to be able to do what they need to do it needs to get on the internet it needs to do email it needs to be able to buy things and keep the economy growing um, then we get down to the utilitarian kind of computer whether that be a, a student uh, in school, in grade school and in, in high school, that's adopted the new Google Classroom method where they can use these small and inexpensive Google Chrome laptops that are disposable, literally disposable, because they're $200 and, and under. And if a child ends up breaking your $1,000 laptop, you'd be really upset. So they have these, you know, little disposable computers. And then we have the, the bucket for the zealots, the people who want to change their computer every one to two years because they get a lot of a true enjoyment out of it and, and they want to spend that money and, and improve their quality of life, so to speak. Then there's gamers. They like to build them, like you alluded to. So they want to buy the very best parts. They, they're um, what I used to refer to as snobby about their purchases, only certain types of monitors, certain types of video cards, and the other components that go inside so that they can say, I built that. Uh, and, and the industry makes it easy for them to put that stuff together. So there's a lot of little buckets, and, and each of us kind of fall into one of those categories. Now, I've seen, uh, I, I've seen uh, people uh, that go to the doctor, well, I, m myself as a prime example. I went to the doctor recently, and I had an issue that sort of flared up. And he said to me, John, why haven't you been coming to me on a regular basis? We could have prevented this. And it seems like uh, whenever I come to you, I have a problem. Sure. Uh, how do you recommend people work with computer shops, computer repair uh, shops? Or you know, And you're not just computer repair. You do a lot of different things for folks. We do. You're consulting, we, too. We do. We do consulting. We help businesses grow. We help them expand and contract. Um, so there's a lot of uh, – we have a touch on a lot of different types of business applications, not – not just at the computer level, but to answer your question, we kind of, we often use a car analogy. 
when we talk about computers and, and how to keep the car running smoothly. And you wouldn't neglect it. You wouldn't go out every morning and just turn the key and go and, and never uh, care about anything more than the gas that goes in there. You obviously change the oil, and some people still do tune-ups, and, and they get the brakes done and rotate the tires. And those are the ones that are going to last longer. And in the world of computers, um, the money you spend on your computer determines its lifespan. And we have a little formula that pretty much holds true. It's $200 a year. So if you buy a $1,000 computer, it's going to last you about five years. Um, and if somewhere after that point or uh, during those five years, if it needs to be repaired, you can use the $200 a year rule to help you determine if it's worth it. Uh, if I spend $400, will it last me at least two more years? And that's how you can kind of figure that out. But generally speaking, a computer that's, that's used in the home needs to be visited by the computer doctor uh, once a year. Um, what, what are, what are some of the common problems that people run into? Uh, uh, we're not talking about upgrades now, and, and, uh, but just general repair. What, what kind of problems do you see that they bring in? Well, like you said, you know, you don't see me until something's broken. So while we often like to say, oh, really great to see you, they're always like uh, unhappy because something happened. But generally what we see now is um, a lot of security issues, a lot of concerns by users, and there's a lot of bad things going on. Uh, whether they're Russian or otherwise. Um, <laughs> and um, people are fearful to click the button that says uh, on the computer that says you need to update me to stay more secure. They're afraid it's not legitimate. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid of that This too. is a big issue. So here's a little tip. Uh, if you're working with a Windows computer, if an update request comes in the lower right-hand corner by the clock, uh, it's legitimate and accept it. Uh, if you're on a Mac and it comes in the upper right-hand corner and it asks you for an update, it's legitimate and accept it. If it happens on a web page, it's not legitimate, don't accept it. Oh, okay. So that's kind of, you know, that, that's a good rule of thumb. It's not absolute, but it'll help you get through it. But this is one of the things that uh, what happens is people click on things that, that they shouldn't because they don't know or they're fearful. Um, and the, the old rule used to be um, don't click on uh, something in an email unless you know who it's from. Well, many of us get these junk emails from people that we know and, and come to realize that they never sent it in the first place, and it's bad. So now the new rule is don't click on anything or open anything um, unless you were expecting it. So if you get yeah, something, yeah. you should really call up and say, you know, hey, Tom, did you send me that attachment? Yeah. I'm afraid to click on it. Now, I see far more comic book stores and even Christmas decoration <laughs> boutiques than I do computer stores. Yeah. Why, why are there so few? And, and how do you find one that, that is, uh, is going to work for you? I think that uh, it, this has to do with society and culture. And if you look at the young children, uh, as, as young as your granddaughter, uh, very adept at computers, even at the yeah. Young she's age got of three. a little. She got a little tablet. They know she's how already to click. She, they, she's three. They know how to double tap. They know how to do everything but clean the room. <laughs> so, but what happens with the what has happened is with the advent of the computer age and with kids growing up with it is they're more comfortable, and the parents are saying, "All right, Junior, you know, help me get out of this mess, and maybe I don't need a computer guy." So the day of the computer boutique, when you went into the computer store a lot like buying a car and you were oversold sometimes and, yeah. and you, you bought something that maybe you didn't need. It was too big, too small. Um, so it kind of the, the whole transaction of the computer uh, purchase and even the repair has gone to the big box places like Best Buy. And if you remember uh, Comp USA and Circuit City, they're gone because the model I don't think works, but they're trying to sell the cheapest computer that they can, and people's expectations have dropped. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're happy buying a four hundred dollar computer, um, but then unhappy two years later when it doesn't work. Right. Yeah. Is there some advantage? Do you believe to to ha having somebody come in and say, "Build me something from scratch," and then you, you sort of consult them and say, "Well, what are you going to use it for?" Before we just start building. <clears throat> yeah, I've always uh, I. It, it's not really reverse engineering, but we, we always start, we at Two River Computer, always start backwards. Uh, what software are you going to be using? What's your application? And then we can determine, are you, are you PC-centric? Are you Apple-centric? Uh, and then we can build the hardware around that, how many people are going to be using it. I mean, there's a, 
a myriad of questions before we can build the hardware around it, but we need to know the application first. You know, it always amazes me too, Tom, that, that uh, uh, besides the repairs that are necessary occasionally for a computer, uh, people don't seem to really completely understand the opportunity that they have to expand the ability of the computer to do things beyond just simply going on Facebook or sending an email from time to time. It's, it's true, and that's where the tablet, the iPad and Android tablets have really made a dent in how we use computers um, because they uh, do a couple of things very well. Uh, internet, email, and photo and media, watching videos and that kind of thing. And, and they're often faster than the fastest computer, um, but they're not a computer. So you need a computer to compare things, you need a computer to, to build some things. And there's others that would argue that you can do almost anything on a tablet, the new iPad Pro or, or some of the other available tablets. And, I, and I'd argue that that's not true. And when the rubber hits the road, you really need a computer in your home. But um, many of the computers, the $400 computers you see in the box store, are pigeonholed. They don't do a lot and they can't expand very much. So what we try to do is if it's a business application, we'll put in a computer that can be expanded. We want to we want to keep the stuff out of the landfill. So if we can go back to a client um, in three years or four years after making an install and say, you know, you don't have to do what we call a forklift install, remove everything that you have and put all new stuff in. Let's upgrade them. Let's upgrade you uh, this year. Let's upgrade those two next year. Let's upgrade those the year after, and then we'll stay on a cycle, almost like leasing a car. You you kind of keep paying, but you always have the latest technology. Well, I, I, I'm just, uh, you know, I, I remember uh, programming in BASIC. I actually learned how to do BASIC, and then I did, uh, oh, remember uh, Unix? Yeah. I, I was doing a little bit of Unix programming for a little That's while. That's what Apple's on. Uh, yeah, my dad taught uh, programming at, at, at the college. Uh, do people need to know a lot about no. stuff to... They don't need to know anything anymore, really. Um, they, what's become second nature for many of us, to click, to tap, to talk, all of the, however we make our requests, the computer thinks for us. You don't need to know uh, too much stuff. Instructions are, um, uh, they're not as good anymore. There's no more manuals, no more discs that comes with any of the products that you buy. So you may get a one sheet, you know, plug your computer, your printer in, stick the cartridges in, and plug the cable in, and it should just go. And many times that's true, but sometimes it's not, and that's where we come in. You know, uh, Tom, I'm very surprised that uh, that artificial intelligence, or at least being able to listen and to speak uh, in some rudimentary way on a computer, ha has not developed more. Well, look at Siri. I think it's developed pretty far, or Cortana on Windows 10. I think it's, oh. it, the, well, the, the speech-to-text engines are very, very good. Uh, there's a product out there called um, Dragon Naturally Speaking that, a lot, of, that. a lot of attorneys yeah, and yeah. doctors use. It's a special language for legal ease and for medical terms, and it knows these things. And you train it, just like you train Siri. Mm -hmm. you, when you get it, you say, hey, Siri, and you say, my name is Tom, and... Um, and it knows, and uh, I think that that's come a long way. What, what do you enjoy about what you do in your shop? Um, I think I get my fuel from being a superhero. Uh, I know that sounds crazy, and I'm not trying to make it so. Um, I solve problems. People come to us, and they're, they're upset. Um, they're sometimes angry. They're, you know, uh, in some in some down state and they're looking for help and we provide the help and so at the end of the day uh, I'm a hero and and it's a great when I show up places I swear people are throwing their hands up hey Tom's here the computer guy's here and when I leave they're you know showering me with stuff here take this well and you can't take great. all the credit because your staff oh, is man, really in, good. Uh, Great customer service and, and all the folks that work there. You walk in, you feel, you don't feel intimidated. You know, they're there to help you. They're concerned. And, and I think, you know, it's like kind of like the Saturday Night Live geek that, uh, you know, where you say, I got a problem, Tom, you know, whatever his name was. And he goes, oh, now what did you do? You know, <laughs> it was always their fault, not his fault. But but you really do collaborate with your, your customers and your clients. And I think you make them feel uh, you make them feel good, and and 
you don't you don't let them worry too much. Because no. typically you do have a solution for their problem, don't you? Almost always, yes, sir. And, and it's not just a question of adding software to your computer to do all these other things. Sometimes you have to add uh, hardware as well. So it always amazes me, as I do Jersey Bay Shore Country, that uh, I always imagine uh, people are looking at my program on a big screen and they're listening with stereo speakers. Well, chances are they're watching it on a small little computer screen with little computer speakers and not really getting, getting the full benefit of what I've edited and want them to appreciate. Uh, how, how, how do you, what, what would you recommend to people as a place to start to say, here's what I want to use it for, or what are some of the uh, things that they can use it for that they haven't even thought of? Because I don't think people have thought beyond, you know, not, not the business users, but the consumers in general, have thought beyond uh, Googling something, looking up theater times, uh, maybe doing some shopping on Amazon.com, going on Facebook and, and shuffling through YouTube and looking at videos. What are some things that really add uh, value to the entertainment experience, to the computing experience for the average consumer? Well, <clears throat> that's an interesting question because what we've seen over the last couple of years is that this is how people view almost everything. Email, internet, videos, yeah. entertainment, it's almost all on here. And to that end, you have to appeal at that level. So now traditional computing if you're if you're not in an office in a in a cubicle, banging out reports and running Excel spreadsheets and writing letters and emails and that, you will very likely be using a device like that. So what that means is is that the the tasks once meant only for computer have been relegated to mobile devices like iPads and iPhones. So when it comes to what can computers do, um, there's other things that they can do and and. For your application, you're editing video and, and, and audio, and that's a high-end application. It requires uh, a lot of computing power. It sure does. People who, are, people who are into marketing in general and their publications and, and uh, designing and um, uh, you know, all manner of, of marketing material creation is, has to be done on a computer. Um, when you get to the more basic stuff, uh, like I said, internet, email, and, and entertainment, it's on the phone. But now you say, what, what else can I do with my computer? Well, in my home, as you might imagine, I'm not too, too crazy, but I have a little bit of a smart home. I've got some video cameras. I've got the smoke detectors. I've got the, the lights that come on and off based on the, uh, the time of day, sunrise, sunset. And, and it's all controlled on my phone. The music in my home is, you know, that's piped throughout my entire house is controlled by my phone. Um, the lights, the cameras, everything. I don't need the computer to do that. Hmm. I need the computer to sit down when I'm doing my taxes, when I, I like to do it when I pay my bills because a lot of people need that workspace. Mm -hmm. I need a desk with a chair and a lamp and a pencil and, I, you know, and then I'm in the zone right. and I have a right. file cabinet right. and, and right. so people need to do that and, and yeah. I understand that. But you know, there's, uh, beyond what you're doing with it today, um, what we can do is we can make you do it faster and we can help you to keep the computer out of the landfill and extend its life. But to get it to do more, the, the reality is we probably push you towards something like this, depending on what it is you're trying to do. Right, right. Well, I, I certainly think I, I would personally recommend, since I have a selfish reason for doing so, that you get yourself a good computer screen if you're going to watch video. Right. Yeah, that's true. And in some that's cases, true. you've seen my screen. It's a it's a television. It's a you know it's a big HD well, TV. Here's one of the, the misconceptions: is that people see that big TV, and it's only two hundred dollars, and it's you know yeah. eighty inches or whatever. It's, it's huge. So it's twenty seven inches, thirty five inches. And, yeah, yeah. You know, um, but it's not a computer monitor, and it can't see these very fine lines uh -huh. unless you have a very good video card, like you do. So the card that drives that puts the image on the screen is important. The ones uh, that are in the computers that come right out of the box, uh, the vanilla flavored ones, we'll say, uh, cannot put a good image on a big screen. So therefore, you need to have a computer monitor, and it's more like a $500 monitor. Well, as, as I said, you can put a big screen TV up there. As long as you've got the right video card, it'll look good. Now, now uh, I know people get a little bit uh, uh, nervous about talking to people about this particular subject when they don't know much about it. Uh, and I know you're you're at the high to middle end in some cases. You're not necessarily 
uh, down in the weeds with the average consumer that's playing <laughs> games necessarily. But but uh, how open are you to some of the folks uh, in the neighborhood, so to speak, uh, to uh, chatting with someone in your organization about their needs or coming in for a chat about their needs? Yeah, we do that a lot. We um, we feel that it's important because you get you get a feel for. Um, the relationship and and if it's going to be a good fit because it needs to be a good fit because a lot of what we do can be uh, intimate may not be the right word but it's very personal especially if we know some of your passwords and and we're able to gain access to your business content you need to trust us um, and so we need to make sure that we can trust you too um, so uh, yeah we'll come in we'll we'll kind of look at what you're doing and um, I used to do what I would call business process engineering with customers, I would go in and I would analyze their most important function. Mm -hmm. They were a sales organization from, from the first time they met the client until the check cleared and all of the steps in between and we'd map them all out, usually with yellow sticky things on the board. And then we would use technology to reduce the number of steps. And often it was a win, but sometimes, as, as many people will uh, attest, that sometimes computers can make things more complicated. Right. But in the end, it's our job to analyze what you're doing, make sure that we can add value in, in, in a way that keeps your data protected, um, makes it more accessible, whether you're home or away or, or at the office or away, I should say, and then um, uh, that it's making things better. What do you think about these external hard drives? They're, what are they, up to three terabyte now bigger. and more? Yeah, they go bigger. Uh, and I've heard, I don't know whether this is an old wives' tale, but, but the bigger ones are more problematic than the smaller ones. Have you heard that? That used to be true. Oh. Uh, that used to be true. Uh, the technology's evolved so much. In fact, they had a big setback, if you remember the, um, the tsunami in Taiwan. A lot of the hard drive manufacturing was happening in Taiwan. Right. And so things were being manufactured on mainland China. And uh, the, the manufacturing wasn't as good and the warranties went down, that's how you could tell. Drives were failing until they ramped back up again and got things back in. But now that the, the sizes have expanded, you can't buy a computer really with less than a one terabyte hard drive, which is a thousand gigabytes for those of you who don't know. Um, and yeah, they go up to four, five, six terabytes external. And a great backup philosophy is, uh, we say the only way is a three-way. And the three-way is the master or the original copy that's on your computer, a local copy on one of these external hard drives, and then a cloud copy. All right. Now, you, you brought <laughs> it up. People are afraid you of it. You brought it up. You, you're going to have to explain. I will. For, for all of us, the cloud, because honestly, some of us are a little cloudy on the cloud. The cloud's a lot of things, but um, what I'm talking about it being is a bucket in the sky that is secured with your name and fingerprint and password and, and everything you need to have to make it secure just for you. I don't you. believe that for one yeah. minute. If you somebody wants it's it. it's up there in the sky yeah. that somebody can find the technology just to reach up there and grab You know it. what? And, and they can. And the government can. Uh, you know, consumers, Joe Consumer, and even high-end hackers can't. Um, but, you know, people can get to it. If they want it, they'll get to it. I'm going to go ahead and recommend something because he convinced me that I needed something that I said yes to. And it's uh, so far, I've only been playing with it for a few days. It has changed my life. It's speeded up my computer significantly. What is it, Tom? Okay, this is something that um, I, I've been in the computer field for 35 years. You're going to love this. I have not seen anything this significant in all that time. Now, that's not to say that this is new technology, but it is now affordable technology. And that makes it new to consumers and to, and to business people. And we all know what a hard drive is, maybe you do. It's the component inside the computer that houses the programs and the data. So, so uh, let's explain it. Most of the time, these hard drives are physical in nature while there are you know, some magnetic areas in here where stuff is kept and blah, 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 and things can get erased and things can be, get put in and et cetera. There's normally some kind of a little tracking thing that goes to find the stuff on the hard drive or There not? is, yeah. There's there's platters and heads, and platters think like uh, think like a jukebox, multiple discs and uh, or albums and multiple needles, and they're moving back and forth. 
and they've stacked them. Some of them have 16. That's been the, the typical number. And they move back and forth, and often when they collapse due to a power failure or some other malfunction, that's what we call a crash. And you can hear them usually, you, you know, yeah. when you see the light flashing and yeah. everything. So when they're searching for something or you're booting up and you hear, you know, that's the hard drive yep. turning on and, and searching for all the things it needs to get your computer up to the point where you can start doing something. It's one of the few mechanical things left inside the computer. Right. The advent of the DVD drive being gone, uh, what's still remaining is fans, so they spin. That's, that's a mechanical device, and the hard drive spins because um, there's moving parts. Well, these new hard drives are SSD, or solid-state drives, uh, super fast. And the, the difference is this, the simple difference, if you remember a floppy disk, and you'd put it in and it would go, eh, 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 and about a minute and a half later, the document might come up. Right. Well, then you saw a flash drive and you stuck things in and boom, they came right on and you could copy stuff to them right, very quickly. Right. That's kind of the analogy between the floppy disk, this kind of hard drive you have now, and the SSD, which is like the flash drive. Super fast. It is changing. It is Every time I see one, it still blows my mind. Yeah. When you can push the power button on your computer and in 10 seconds, 10 real seconds, it is up and ready to go. Now, now Not listen, a minute and a half. I, when I turn on my computer in the morning, uh, the minute I, I, I you know, flip the switch, I walk away, I get my cup of coffee, make the coffee, uh, maybe put some toast in the toaster, <laughs> and, and, by the, and put cream and sugar in the coffee. And by the time I get back to my computer, it's still booting up. That's a very common problem and a very common analogy. I'm going to go get coffee, and when I come back, maybe it'll be ready. Maybe. You don't have time to turn around. Right. You push the button. By the time you sit down, it's hey, ready to go. This thing, yeah. you've got to get one. It's fantastic. How, how large are these? What's the capacity? Well, that's the trade-off. So uh, with the traditional hard drives, the spinning ones with the disks, they, they start out at around one terabyte <laughs> or 1,000 gigabytes. And they go up to, say, let's say for argument's sake, we'll stick with the four or 4,000 gigabytes. So 1,000 one to 4,000 gigabytes in size, but really slow. The SSD hard drives start at 128 gigabytes, and they go up to about 1,000. And that's all. So they're yeah. smaller, but way faster. And one of the biggest problems that we've seen when people go to the store to buy a computer that has an SSD hard drive, they buy it too small. Well, we're going to end part one. We're going to come back next week for part two of this uh, fascinating discussion about computers with uh, Tom Bull. Uh, but in the meantime, you know what I always say. If you see me out there uh, walking around, uh, maybe I'm sitting on the park bench with a laptop, don't hesitate to come up to me and say hello, introduce yourself, because nothing is more important than meeting you. I'll see you next time, folks. Bye-bye.